Is your committee planning on talking to Jenny Thomas, even though her lawyer has expressed a, a reluctance to cooperate? We are. The committee is engaged with her counsel. Uh, we certainly hope that she will uh, agree to come in voluntarily, but the committee is fully prepared to contemplate a subpoena uh, if, if she does not. Um, I hope it doesn't get to that. I hope she will come in voluntarily. We've, we've certainly spoken with uh, numbers of people who are similarly situated in terms of the discussions that uh, she was having uh, that you've mentioned. So uh, it's very important for us to speak with her. And, uh, and as I said, I hope she will agree to do so voluntarily, but, but I'm sure we will contemplate a subpoena if she won't. So Ginny Thomas, uh, not necessarily interested in cooperating because that's apparently how it works for people like Ginny Thomas. If you're you know, wife of a Supreme Court justice, cooperating with Congress is optional, I guess. Uh, Steve Bannon recently found out that uh, no, not necessarily so optional. He's facing uh, you know, charges and all that. Um, but Ginny Thomas might be brought in now, why? Uh, well, she was communicating with basically everyone in the scheme to undo the results of the election. Uh, she potentially talked with Clarence Thomas, who uh, did uh, take part in one Supreme Court decision that involved the release of documents that might have hurt the Trump effort might have made it look bad. We might have learned something from that. So there are some reasons to want to bring her in. Although, as they say there, she might not want to cooperate. And uh, although they've given subpoenas to people like Steve Bannon, they haven't done it with all of the people who've refused to come in, Francesca. So it'll be interesting to see if the um, you know uh, Steve Bannon you know, successfully being charged, if that's going to I don't know maybe give them a little bit more incentive or a little bit more confidence that if they put forward a subpoena, something will actually come from it. I mean, I feel like it's the beginning of a little meet cute, you know, like a little like rom-com between Ginny and Bannon. They're both there for 30 days. JK, 15 days. JK, they just had to like pick up some trash <laughs> on the side of the road um, for being in contempt of Congress. And then they fall in love with each other. And then, you know, Clarence is like, phew, bullet dodged. It's, it's just gonna be very exciting. I don't think Ginny Thomas is going to testify. There's just no way that she's going to open herself to uh, actually discussing what the Kraken means in her mind. Um, and all of the other crazy conspiracies that she's going to be, you know, that she had spewed in the days leading up to January 6th. I think what's likely, I mean, I don't think she's gonna testify, but I also don't think they're gonna hold her in contempt. So I feel like we're gonna be in this limbo for a while um, when she absolutely should be held in contempt, when she absolutely should be made to testify. And by the way, that that like don't release the documents relating to January 6th that Clarence Thomas voted against, he was in the minority position, which mm -hmm. is even funnier. Cause you're like, mm -hmm. oh, you legit have someone to protect, like directly sure. someone pr to protect. And this is not yeah. even like a go along, yeah, everyone doesn't wanna release these documents. Executive priv privilege doesn't matter. No, 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 <laughs> it's, there's a motive. He mm -hmm. should be impeached. Anyway, are we there yet? Sorry. Yeah, no, uh, we're not there yet, unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah. So look, you, so you don't believe that they're gonna they're gonna do the subpoena, or if she does, there's not gonna be you know uh, the DOJ won't be dispatched. Oh, but but no follow up from the DOJ no. when she refuses to comply. Yeah, that's possible. I, I want to dive for just a second into hypothetical futures. So yeah, let's say that she does testify. I, our, our knee jerk reaction would be that's a good thing, right? In the same way that I guess we would want Steve Bannon to testify. I mean, these are people who were involved in different ways, obviously. And Ginny Thomas, like Steve Bannon, I'm worried about all the ways he was involved in all the ways that we've found out about. For Ginny Thomas, most of what she's tried to do, I feel like, and we'll get into the text messages, the reaction from a lot of those people is probably like, you know, when you get like tagged in a Facebook post by your crazy uncle about what's really going on on Mars, I feel like most of them probably didn't believe or take seriously the things she was saying because she's out of her goddamn mind. <laughs> um, so for me, let's say that she does testify. What does that even look like? Is it is it just her doing like a, a parody of Alex Jones? Like what? She's so deluded. She believes every crazy thing, not just some crazy, every single crazy thing. She believes it. So, what would be the objective of having her testify? Do we think we could trust anything that she says? Do we 
think that anything she says has any merit is attached to reality in any way? I mean, I think if she did testify, we'd see something akin to the Kavanaugh hearing and you know, like basically the yes, the Kavanaugh hearing when he was confirmed. Um, less beer, perhaps. <laughs> um, maybe. Maybe, you know, who well, knows how Ginny, Ginny gets down. A lot of sherry, less beer. The reason I say that is because it'd be throwing her former self under the bus. Meaning Kavanaugh's not gonna own up to like being a rapey jock in high school and college, right? Mm -hmm. Ginny Thomas is not gonna own up to being an utter crackpot. Um, so she'll be like, oh, the Kraken. See, we would we just watched the Pirates of the Caribbean, and I've, if you've seen it, like <laughs> Justice for Johnny, um, the second episode is all about, you know, like it'd be this whole thing about like, no, I don't believe because because at this point. Everyone who has testified, who is part of the Trump team and or part of them, even MAGA folks has said, yeah, no, we were lied to. Mm -hmm. I knew that the election results were what they were and Biden legitimately won. Yeah. And the only person who hasn't is Steve Bannon, right? And and he's, I don't think gonna testify. And so what's Ginny gonna do? Is Ginny gonna choose the Bannon side of the sand or is Ginny gonna choose everybody else? And then the real question is, I mean, you could even just ask her like, hey, how often do you talk to your husband every day? Mm -hmm. Oh no, we don't even who? What do you, what? That old, <laughs> that old like loon? Like no, it'd be how much contact you have with your husband. That to me is the most interesting is how much obviously from everything I've read, they're joined at the hip, right? Like yeah. they don't do anything separate. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I, look for me, I think, Having them te so testify can mean multiple things. Do you have them testify behind closed doors? Do you have them testify live? On, t I think he having either of them testify live, they will use it as an opportunity to shout out crazy lies. I think that's what it, it will be an attempt to just say that the election was. They, I see so that's where I kind of disagree with you about Jenny Thomas that she would backtrack a ton, maybe her lawyers would be able to, be able to get through to her and tell her that look you. Saying what you really believe could be really damaging to your husband and all that. But she's a true believer. Like mm. we'll get into we'll get into some of the text. Like, would she want to tell all of her, you know, all the people she agrees with that it was fake, that she didn't really believe it? I some of these people, that's their community. I'm not sure that they're gonna publicly denounce them by denouncing those beliefs. Sure. I'm not all, sure. All her all her QE, her Q and on Facebook friends are like, do it, Jenny. We got mm -hmm. you. I'm under exactly. a bridge in Dallas, Texas, drinking weird things out of vats. <laughs> we got you, Jenny. Like the literally, you might be. But right. no vaccines for me. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.